right, I think we're live, but I'm going to give the uh, live audience a chance to catch up on the broadcast. It's about a 10-second delay. See, Mazakeen Lewis is joining us tonight. All right, we should be caught up. Welcome to Mixing Night. I'm your host, Ken Lewis. Join me for the next two hours, and let's have some fun in the studio together tonight. This is our zone. Let's enjoy a creative evening with our gear. <laughs> And, uh, and a bunch of like-minded people who love music the way we love music. Uh, you and me and everybody watching, uh, if you're commenting on the chat roll or the comments, uh, shout out to my Mixing Night Discord community. Uh, you, you guys are all totally awesome. Uh, you're all a part of the Mixing Night community. Welcome to Mixing Night. I'm really glad that you're here. I'm Ken Lewis, and I have the weirdest resume in the entire music industry. Uh, I'm mostly a producer and mixer. Where did Mazzy go? Come here, Maz. This way. This way. Come on, Maz. There you go. Lay down. Um, I'm mostly a producer and mixer, and I got a lot of other skill sets. Uh, and I got 103 gold records to back that shit up. Uh, check out my resume at KenLewis.com. Should be easy to find. I just started a plug-in company. I am super, super excited about that. Mixing Night Audio. Clever title, huh? I thought so, too. Um, it took us a long time to think of the title. So I'm really excited about it. I'm going to show you guys a little bit more about Green Haas tonight. That's our first plug-in. Man, I am totally in love with this thing. Uh, so tonight I'm going to be dropping a ton of audio DAW gems for you guys and girls, answering pre-submitted questions and uh, live questions from the chat roll. Dominic is on the chat roll tonight, <laughs> harvesting questions and feeding them to me live, so fire away. Uh, there is somebody watching. I can't monitor the chat roll, but they feed me. Tonight is action-packed. We have sprint mixing, beat challenging. Full song mixing, plug in picking, ear training, green hossing, Gracie Wood interviewing, Marcus Manderson mysterying. Whew, the night will be full throttle until the final bell. And please set your alert bell now to notify you when the next mixing night is coming up. It's just that little thing that looks like a bell. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that. That always helps us. Um, so catch us in two weeks. We'll do this all again. Okay, so tonight you pick my plugins. Uh, there's a link in the description. Uh, don't lose the show, but go open that link and it's just a bunch of check boxes. Uh, you guys get to pick what I am gonna use for my full mix. Um, at 9.15, I'll tally up all of the votes. Uh, it's 8 o'clock right now, so if you're in a different time zone, you have an hour and 15 minutes to vote. Uh, I'll tally up all of the votes, and I will see what atrocities that you guys have bestowed upon me. Uh, I must only use the plugins that you picked, and hopefully, uh, even with the limitations, I mean, my ears and my instincts are pretty good, so they're going to guide me to hopefully really good results. <laughs> My dog is such a bitch. Come on, lay down. Hey, lay down. Mazzy insists on being the star of the show. God bless her. Uh, so, you know, once you master the tools, they're really just tools. And the real mastery is making those tools work for you creatively. So tonight, I am mixing a user-submitted song. Uh, it was submitted for this week's Beat Challenge by Sam Champagne and Jason Lee. They collaborated on it. It's it's fucking awesome to see people collaborating, you know, because of this show and like creatives connecting and everything, especially if you're not on the Discord channel yet, that's get over there. There's a ton of creativity happening. OK, Sam Champagne and Jason Lee. The song is called On My Bully, and uh, they created it from the starter loop that I provided uh, two weeks ago on the last show uh, for the Beat Challenge. And they blew it out in, into an entire song. I really thought it was amazing work, and I wanted to give it a better mix and show you guys how to improve your own work. So um, that starts at 9.20 p.m. Pick my plugins right now. Link is in the description. Check it out. Okay, so sprint mixing. Tonight, I am sprint mixing a really special song from a 17-year-old independent artist, Gracie Wood, from South Carolina. Uh, check her out at, at Gracie Wood official, um, especially on uh, Instagram and TikTok. Uh, let's see. So the song that I'm going to be sprint mixing is called My Boo, 
and uh, and it is produced by um, and the music was done by Mixing Night co-founder Dominic Ravinius, and he also did the final mix on it. Um, so hopefully I won't fuck up the mix when I sprint it. I can't promise anything. You know, it is live. So, but you know, when I heard the song, I just asked Dominic and Gracie if I could use it to sprint mix and maybe if we could do an interview with Gracie. So I think around 8.20 tonight, we're going to have a short interview with Gracie Wood. She is absolutely charming. You will be enthralled. Um, and what a voice she has. You'll hear it in a second. So Dominic produced it and did the original mix now. Uh, so what is sprint mixing? Uh, and why do I do it? So it's not so that you can mix fast. That's not the point, although it does give you that skill set. So, but sprints hone your instincts and your decision-making abilities. Uh, and yes, those can be improved and developed into really razor sharp skill sets. So this teaches you the skill of balancing two sounds against each other very quickly, living with it and moving on to the next decision. And you do that in the studio if you're creating or mixing or recording all day, every day. And this is, this helps that. So, um, okay. So on to, on to the live video games, player one, uh, Gracie Wood, my boo, Sprint Mix. Uh, let me mask up. It's still the apocalypse out there. Be safe, everybody. If you haven't gotten vaccinated yet, go get your shot as soon as you can. I'm, me and Lori are fully vaxxed. Mazzy's vaccinated. And, uh, all right, I'm going to put 10 minutes on the clock. Get my heavy metal lights rocking. Boom. And welcome to Mixing Night. I am so glad you're here. My name is Ken Lewis. Thank you for joining me. Mazakeen is happy to have you. And, uh, oh, I gotta launch my boo, don't I? Boo sprint. Boom. Okay, well, give me a moment. <laughs> give me a moment to. Here we go. Okay. Mazzy, lay down. Lay down. It's about to get loud in here, sweetie. Come on. Okay. And it is about to get really damn loud in here. Here we go. Ten minutes. Sorry. Okay. Here goes nothing. See how much I have in the mix in one minute?
you see how I'm using my controller to select tracks in Pro Tools? So that gives me a visual cue of where those tracks are so that I can adjust them. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Three minutes left and all tracks are in the mix. Now I can just spend the rest of the time fine tuning, balancing, and finishing the mix bus. And giving Mazzy treats.
That's it. Ten minutes. Start to finish. I got it pretty well nailed after about eight or nine. Hang on, hang on. Stop timer. Okay, back to our regularly scheduled broadcast. Stop the heavy metal lights, put on the broadcast lights. Woo! That is really mentally taxing, uh, but also really super fun. Uh, and uh, just to, so I have those, uh, I have a bunch of these sprints, not this particular one, but I have a bunch of other really great songs for sale at my audioschoolonline.com if you want to try your own sprints. It is the single fastest way for anybody from I can't mix anything, I have no idea where to start, to I'm trying to compete with Ken Lewis level. Uh, the sprint mixes are the fastest way to get your skills super fast and razor sharp, and there's a, and they're super fun. Lori's on like level four on the Temptation sprint uh, and doing really well with it. I think we got to revisit that and see if she can get up to level five. But I think I think and she's never mixed anything. This is like her first uh, venture at it, and she's really crushing it. So um, I am going to uh, bring up uh, Gracie Wood the girl that you just heard as soon as I have some coffee you know me oh 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 let me bring in my assistant Rory Miller uh oh shit oh ah damn it I missed he's gone he's off to the train you'll meet him next time crap so Rory started uh this week he just graduated high school on Monday and started working for me on Tuesday thrown right into the fire and uh he's been a champ so far it's been super great i meant to bring him in and and uh introduce him but it's a live show and it's really hard to remember everything so um, so anyway before i totally forget to call gracie uh i am gonna call gracie and have a little chat with her mazakeen lewis you are a little spoiled brat um where is uh oh is this there we go okay here's skype and gracie wood um, let me see if I can get Gracie on the phone, and we'll have a little chat. She is an absolute darling. Uh, you guys are going to love her. So let me see if I can start calling. Boom. Oh, Ooh, that's loud. Hello. Hello. Gracie Wood, welcome to my uh, Mixing Night broadcast. And uh, it's good to see I you. I can hear you. Oh. Oh, no. Hold. You're good. I'll uh, be here. Where is, there it is. Come on. Sorry, I totally, this defaults. How about now? I can hear you now. Awesome. Okay, I don't, I don't know how to, there you are. Let's see if we can do a professional broadcast tonight. <laughs> Gracie Wood, uh, 17 years old from South Carolina. Um, independent artist. Uh, we love the song around here. We are all big fans of My Boo. Um, and uh, obviously, come on, lay down. Stop begging. My dog is being very insistent this evening. <laughs> so, all right. Stairs just for that reason. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's usually a fun part of the broadcast, but now she's just being a little unruly, aren't you? Okay, so <laughs> you're going to be a high school senior. Um, uh, what's coming up next for you? What's, what's going on currently? What's coming up next briefly? Right now, we've just finished the mixing part of the song. The next step is to get it mastered and out to the public, which is really exciting. So that's in the close future. But as far as long term, obviously more songs are going to be on the way. I love writing. I'm really excited to possibly co-write with Dom and have him produce some more songs for me. That would be awesome. Uh, do, so, you, do you aspire to be an artist for your career? It has been a debate in my mind, but yes, I finally made up my mind that I this is the ideal situation for me. I couldn't ask for anything more than doing what I absolutely love and I'm completely passionate about for a living. So, yes, it, I, I aspire to be an artist. It, it doesn't suck. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, plenty days suck, but everybody's job sucks all the time. Doing music every day, even the worst days, you're like, all right, we still got to do music for, you know. <laughs> um, how would you describe your, your sound and your style musically and just art, as an artist in general? Uh, so the song that you just heard, You Ain't My Boo, is more of a R&B pop kind of vibe, but 
I, I draw inspiration from pop artists, R&B artists, and alternative pop artists. So I think that my sound will generally remain in those areas. So I'm not, I'm not completely opposed to exploring other genres, but pop is definitely my main source of inspiration. Nice, nice. Uh, and I remember asking you a, a, a while ago and you said Ariana Grande was one of your favorites. Oh, yes. Love her. <laughs> yeah, me and Brent produced her when she was much younger. Um, we, we we were, were the we produced her first EP. We wrote and produced her first EP uh, with her um, independently, and uh, I was the first person to ever vocal produce her in the studio. That is and, so cool. Yeah, was, trust me. It's in retrospect that is fucking wild. But the moment I met her, it was very obvious she was a star. Um, so, uh, uh, what was your favorite part about collaborating with Dom? Well, Dom is just an awesome person in general. Uh, he's super, super kind and very accepting to, like... He, he is? <laughs> Dom's going to kill you in the chat for that one. <laughs> but my favorite part of Dom, uh, working with Dom, was exploring these new sounds and putting, honestly, a lot of faith in him to make a great product. And obviously it came out better than I could have ever imagined. So I'm really glad that I put that trust in him, but just building a partnership with him has been amazing. It really has. That's, that's really great. And I think a lot of artists look for and search for those creatives that they just really connect with and everything, you know, not everything clicks and goes together, but most things, you know, really happen nice. So that's really great. Um, and you guys are gonna keep co-writing together. Um, you have, quite the social following you have 28,000 plus uh instagram followers um you're on tiktok uh your socials are at gracie wood g-r-a-c-i-e gracie wood uh official at gracie wood official uh for insta and tiktok are you on any other platforms uh not not really in like the the music way <laughs> right okay so how did so how did you build your following um and how long did it take so I started my Instagram account that I currently have now uh, with a makeup account. Okay. I was just posting makeup looks and, you know, I was trying not to annoy my friends on my personal account. So that's why I started my own. And after that, you know, it went by for a few months and it went really well. But I love singing for people. I would go on lives all the time, even when it was a makeup account, go on Instagram lives and sing for others. And I really found it awesome. But I didn't really do it as often as I do now. And in about December, I started going on lives with just random people that you find that are going live on Instagram. And I started performing for them. And that's actually how the song came to be is I, I wrote it as a way to get like my original music out there. I always wanted like an original song. So I was like, why not write it now and test the waters. Uh, okay. So, so let me get this straight. You wrote a song so that you can then go on other people's Instagram lives while they're just live streaming, doesn't whoever they are. Mm -hmm. And I assume you're targeting it some in some way. And uh, and they're bringing you into their broadcast and you're singing and then their people hear your incredible voice and they're like, I'm going to follow her. And that's how you built your following. How, how many of these lives have you done? There's a... It's, it's been a lot. I would probably, on average, when I was super, super consistent with my social media, would do about 10 to 15 lives a night, which has probably equated since December to probably like 500 plus. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> and you just, this was all when you were 16. You just turned 17. Yes. Okay. Okay. Can we pause the interview for just a brief moment while I talk to my people? Uh, people, you no longer have any excuse whatsoever to not grind and build your own following and get out there and make things happen for yourself. Because if Gracie Wood Official can do it, and she's only just turned 17 years old, and she mo did most of this since December. I mean, how nutty is that? Uh, you can do it too. Okay, back to our regularly scheduled interview. Gracie Wood, great to have you on the show. Mazakeen is getting quite unruly. Lay down, baby girl. Come on, lay down. Be a good girl. Uh, 
<laughs> She's usually a sweetheart. She's really getting treat uh, insistent. Urgh. Okay, let me, let me get to a couple more questions I got here. Who are some of your idols? Who inspires you? Well, as we discussed, Ariana Grande is my biggest idol. I had the chance to meet her in 2019, and it was nice. the best day of my life to this day, besides working with Dom and Ken. But... <laughs> But she's definitely one of them. I'd say in my younger years, I really looked up to Barbara Streisand because my mom would show me a lot of her music and I watched Funny Girl and I thought it was great. I also love Adele and Billie Eilish and Olivia Rodrigo. You know, uh, Billie and Olivia really inspire me as a younger artist to Billy. Do, do as much as I can. <laughs> do as much as I can just because they're so young and accomplishing so much. So it really pushes you to do better. But yeah. I, I think the combination of Billy and Phineas together making records is. Phineas is so underrated. He's a great artist himself. Like, he is, oh. but the and I I don't want to take anything away from him as an artist because I like him as an artist. But the yeah. what they do together as Billy Eilish is super special. I'm just. Phenomenal. Yeah, we're we're lucky to have that level of talent floating around at that age. It's pretty impressive. Uh, your level of talent at that age is pretty impressive. So, uh, yeah. Um, okay, so um, from your experience, what are the things a young artist struggles with most when you're starting out and trying to make a name for yourself? Understanding the music industry and everything it takes to release a song is actually a lot harder than it seems. Uh, I, at least, was... You know, anticipating in December when I wrote my song to release it on Valentine's Day. I was like, two months? You know, oh, all the time in the world. And now totally. here we are in June. Uh, and <laughs> and I am still trying to get this song out. So it has it taken a lot just knowing all the different steps of like copyright and, you know, music and BMI and all, all this all this stuff that you really don't hear about in you know, like mainstream, like I'm just listening to Dua Lipa and she released this song today. Great. You know, and so it, it takes a lot. It takes a village to get this song out. But it, I think the process is all worth it. But just learning the ropes of like finding a producer that works for you and all of that stuff is really important. It's great at such a young age that you realize that this business does take a village because... Like even, I mean, look at Kanye. Kanye is a brilliant, brilliant record maker and he surrounds himself with a ton of other brilliant record makers so they can make records that are brilliant on a level that nobody else can make. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it's not like he couldn't make brilliant records completely by himself. Uh, and that's one of the brilliant things about him is he really pulls people into his sphere. Um, and thank you, Kanye, for pulling me into your sphere a few times, a few dozen times. Uh, let's see. Um, last question. Um, da -da -da -da, do I have any more questions? Um, have you, okay, last question. Have you thought there have been moments where you thought something is much more work or much tougher than you expected? Is that putting putting the song out? It would be putting the song out. Um, before I, I obviously have been singing my whole life, but before I ever got in a studio, you know, I thought, all right, studio time, you know, what is it? But going into the studio and recording a song is physically and mentally draining to sit there and work on and try to get in your headspace, but also make sure the pitch is correct and also do all these harmonies and stack the vocals and do doubles. And it's just a lot. So definitely studio time was the biggest shock to me because I always thought, you know, I'm just singing like it's not gonna, you know, what is it gonna do? My voice will be tired, but it is physically draining, but obviously completely worth it. Oh, yeah. And I mean, that's the, the funnest stuff anyway, so. Yes. But yeah, I, I work vocalists so hard, but I mean, if you listen to the records we produced, man, the vocals are always just fucking incredible and we love working with great vocalists i mean i'm sure you have you heard the scrizzly adams stuff that we've been cooking up me and my mom have been listening <laughs> Ooh, and the harler stuff has been amazing we're about to drop another single on harler uh end of this month uh actually a full ep so uh like you're talking <laughs> there that's gonna be their first ep um we've been single 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 four singles gonna uh bundle the ep into uh six songs to put out so um yeah so 
Uh, everybody should be checking for you. I will certainly be checking for you. Uh, you can follow her at Gracie Wood Official. Uh, please follow her and support her. And, uh, you know, as soon as my boo is up, you know, I'm going to be uh, uh, blasting it out on my Instagram and, and we'll let you know on the show. Um, so maybe we'll have you back for a performance or something sometime uh, later on this year. Um, all right. I will talk to you later and I'm heading on with the show. Take care. Bye, Ken. Right, bye, Gracie. Okay. Um, her, here's, if you want to follow her, this is where to get her. At Gracie Wood Official. Okay. On with the show. I'm going to go to a little bit of Q&A. Man, Mazzy is being super, super insistent tonight. <laughs> All right. What's next after Gracie? Q&A. Hey. All right. We got ear training coming up after Q&A. In about 10 minutes, I think. Um, all right. Uh, you okay, babe? Lay down. Lay down, baby. Um, what's the most important part to mixing and mastering? Uh, Kabir asks, Hey, Ken, what's the most important part to mixing and mastering? Uh, Kabir, the song is the most important part to mixing and mastering. Um, every decision that you make in the mix should be... Uh, you should ask yourself, What does the song need? And how, what action can I take to get me closer to that result? Um, and that gives you different uh, results than it asking like, oh, should I add more 10K on the hi-hat on the hi or the snare? It's more of a question of like, okay, do, do I need more bass in my mix? Or is it just that I need to turn up the bass in the, on the mix bus? Or do I need to just push a fader on the bass line? Or is it the kick drum or the 808? I, these are the questions that you need to ask yourself that I think um, uh, are completely different than frequencies and ratios and formulas and shit like that, which I never think in math. Okay, uh, David asks, Hey Ken, I am a rank beginner at mixing. David, you found the right place. Okay, um, what are the... F I am experienced at recording. Good, David. Okay, what are the first three things you do when you sit down to mix a new track? Okay. First three things I do, the first thing I do is I listen to the rough mix from uh, the artist or the client, whoever it is. I listen to the rough mix a bunch. And the reason is, same as last answer, to give me a picture of what the song is that I'm about to mix. Uh, what am I getting myself into? What What is that song basically telling me? And I'm formulating an idea in my brain of where I'm going to take that song. Second. Uh, you see, you just saw the sprint mixes. Uh, I don't mix that fast in real life, but for the most part, in the first half an hour, if I have a hundred track mix, everything is in the mix. Maybe I leave the ad libs out and some of the small sound effects and shit that I can get to later. But the bulk of everything, no matter what the track count is, is going to be in the mix as fast as I can get it there because this is mixing, and everything affects everything else in Mixland. So the sooner that you get the whole thing into the mix, then you can start evaluating the song and asking the song what it needs and making your decisions based on that. So mix fast at first, get everything into the song, and then slow down and just listen carefully and uh, you know just revise over time until you can get through a bunch of listens without touching any controls. Okay. And practice sprint mixing. That's definitely a, a must. Uh, all right. Um, do I got any uh, chat roll questions? Fire away. Um, so uh, pre-submitted uh, from Pablo Tassi. Hey, Ken, for your mixes, are you currently using a hybrid approach, analog and digital? If yes, which analog gear do you use? Many thanks. Uh, Pablo, I run a very hybrid system. My baby. SSL AWS 900 plus. Uh, I think this is about 15 years old, but it is a beast mode console. And it switches, if I can get the overhead camera on me. When this blue light is on, uh, I'm on analog mode. And everything, so if I mute this, it'll get rid of... There I, there I go. And if I hit the blue button, it switches everything into uh, Pro Tools mode. So now, anything that I affect here changes Pro Tools. So if you look at the kick, if I mute the kick here, it mutes the kick uh, 
in Pro Tools and unmute it, vice versa. So this allows me to work really fast both in the box and on a, on an analog console because I start uh, my mix just you know with the the digital faders and then I move to the um, tweaking the the board and the console and things like that. Okay. Uh, in a few minutes we're going to do ear training. I'd say five minutes for ear training. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, Alex asks, "Hey Ken, uh, I love and need green Haas in my life." I do too, Alex, but can't find where to buy it. Uh, where can I where can I download it? Uh, Alex, we are setting up a web store. It's going to be Mixing Night Audio, mixingnightaudio.com. Uh, it's not up yet. Uh, we're days away from uh, alpha and beta testing on the plugin itself. There's so many things. Like Gracie was talking about with putting out a song. Same thing in Plugin Land. I'm learning all of these things about how to put out, you know, just digital products, period, let alone plugins and how to design those, which is another whole nightmare. Um, so yeah, Green Haas, July. Um, here's hoping. Uh, Elias asks, uh, hey Ken, if I've been making music for 16 years in my studio, having fun, who do I call to get paid tonight a multi-million dollar deal? Elias? I want to know who I call to get my multi-million dollar. Where's my mu where is my multi-million dollar? I want one. I want to. They they don't fall from trees, man. They are re <laughs> it is it is really damn hard to make money in the music industry ever. Um, okay, from the chat roll, Paul Nielsen asks, "Hey Ken, when dealing with the kick bass relationship, what do you normally start with EQ wise in order to get them to not mask each other?" Okay. Um. First, I just listen. And usually, it's just a balance thing. Usually, I'm not like carving things out from one to affect the other because most of the time, they kind of work together. Usually, producers pick sounds that go together. Not always. And when it's a mess, then, then I start listening. I make sure the 808 is tuned or the bass line is tuned and it's not rubbing against the kick drum because the kick drum can have tone to it even if it's... Um, you know, even if it's just a kick drum, it may have a note or a tone associated with it. And if it hits against your 808s or bass line wrong, it could get really messy. Um, so I listen for those. I, I mostly listen to tuning and, and how things are um, affecting each other. And then I just make moves from there. Um, you know, uh, it's so hard to say without, you know, every situation is just so different. Okay, who's next? Uh, from the chat roll, Abraham Knowlton asks, Hey, Ken, any tips on dithering and noise shaping? Um, the only dithering I ever think to do is on the mix bus. Um, and, I mean, shit is so loud nowadays. What the fuck do you need dithering for? I, you know, maybe it helps, like, this much. I'm not saying not to do it, but I, I, don't, I don't ever think of that. I don't ever think about that stuff much. I try and stick to the um, musical-related things. But I, I think I dither at 24-bit, um, and uh, uh, and I give my... The, the important thing is headroom on your mix bus. Uh, I give less than a tenth of a dB of headroom on my mix bus, but it's like uh, 0 0.08, 0 0.09 on uh, your brick wall output. Um and, uh, what's wrong, baby girl? She's all out of sorts tonight. Um, Mazzy's really, uh, make, making a fuss. Um, okay, uh, I think I answered that. Uh, corn, corn swagger, corn swagger. Uh, corn swagger from the chat roll asks, Hey, Ken, how do you feel about mastering through Lander, uh, or Emastered? I've never used Emastered. I haven't used Lander in a while, but... Um, but I have, uh, I've chatted with the, the, I think he's the CEO, I'm not really sure, one of the top dogs over there. And here's the thing that you need to remember about Lander and software in general. It evolves and improves. And what Lander was two years ago, three years ago, one year ago, man, everybody at that company, it's their mission in life to make Lander the best shit possible. So, um, you know, they're in constant improvement mode. I, I think stuff like that is... Look, we have 60,000 songs a day, a day, every single day, uploaded to Spotify in the world. Those aren't going to all be professionally mastered. 
So if I'm creating beats all the time, I'm going to have a Lander account or I'm going to have Ozone 9. Ozone 9 has Mastering Assistant on it and it kind of masters for you. Um, same with Lander. It's basically Lander for a plugin. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm all for that stuff. I am all for whatever gear improves the quality of your work and whatever methods and skills improve the quality of your work. And I don't care if it's a $10 plugin or a $1,000 plugin or, you know, whatever it is. Okay, uh, one more question, and then I'm going to go to ear training. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. <laughs> oh, this this is... I don't know how to answer this one, but I'll, I'll wing it. Okay. Uh, Sin Delamar asks, Hey, Ken. How do I break into the industry if I don't have any mentors? Uh, also, I don't have any official credits due to being young and not knowing the business side of engineering. Any tips on making sure I am credited for my work? Okay, first of all, stop worrying about being credited for your work right now. Just find some work. You are super young. You have an entire life to make records. Right now, you need to be in learning how to make records mode. You're not going to go out there and get paid well to mix records. Nobody's going to, you know, you need actual real credits for that. The way that you get actual real credits is you go work for somebody else. Rory Miller, incredibly talented guy, graduated high school on Monday, started assisting for me on Tuesday. And uh, today is his second day. And so you can do that. Um, and, you know, find a way. Um, I, okay. So, uh, da, 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 let's see, how do I break into the industry? And that's, you know, go find a mentor. Just start reaching out to people. Look, I mean, Gracie Wood just, she's done 500 lives on Instagram and, and look at her results. She has 28,000 legit followers now. It's incredible. You, you know, you guys need to understand that whatever excuses that you're making for yourself um, because things aren't happening for you, that the universe doesn't care. The universe doesn't care what your excuses are and nobody else in the industry cares what your excuses are because this industry is really, really hard to break into. And it's going to take the most motivated and the most focused on top of the most talented. And if you want to be in this industry, then it's going to take real focus and real drive and real uh, actions and, you know... Uh, but you can absolutely make things happen for yourself. Gracie proved it. Um, so use her as an example and get to work and great things will happen for you too. And I wish you luck, Sin. Um, okay, let's go to ear training. Um, man, that boo song is so good. Uh, I'm going to save that sprint and listen to it later. Uh, where is ear training? Okay, ear training tonight is levels. Let me get my trusty ear training out. Okay. So I'm going to play a, a series of um, musical pieces. I think all of these are from A.J. Smith drama. Uh, so uh, people that saw the drama episode will definitely recognize the song. Now, you're listening for two things. You're listening for uh, level change, the amount of decibels up or down, and whether it goes up or down. So up or down is one point, and how many decibels the exact guess is one point. So there's a total of 20 points. There's 10 examples here. Uh, the yellow is unaffected. The red is the change. Yellow unaffected, red is the change. So it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you're listening for how much did this change and in what direction. Uh, and then I know there's something else to this. Okay. And I think the if you have your ear training sheet in front of you, if you don't have your ear training sheet in front of you, it's in the description on the video you're watching right now. Just go to the description and download the, uh, the PDF, and it'll open right on your screen. You can follow right along. Okay. Number 6 through 10. The item on your, uh, well, what it says here, vocals, drums, bass, timpani, organ. That is the singular thing that is changing in the mix. So what we did was we went back to the drama mix and we isolated certain instruments and vocals and we either turned them up or down and didn't change anything else but that one thing. So you have to listen to the full mix and hear the change in either the lead vocal on six or the drums on seven, the bass on eight. Nothing else changes and you got to 
detect which direction it went and by how much. Let's get started. You get two listens through, then the reveal. Um, okay, uh, number one. You understand this? Number two. All right, number three, the piano. Number four, drum loop. Number five, synthesizer. Okay, here's where it gets more challenging. The only thing that changes is the level of the lead vocal. The rest of the music mix doesn't change. Driving by your ex best friend, getting married to your ex boyfriend down at the ex best friend, getting married to your ex boyfriend down at the pier. Same place he swore he still loved you last year. Same place he swore he still loved you last year. Where we begged for your feet last year. Where we begged for your feet, lied straight into your feet, said I'm yours, do you? You are straight into your feet, said I'm yours, do you? You are. You get the challenge. All right, the only thing that changes on seven is the drums. I begins to raise, don't know what to say, call your mom crying on the phone. I begins to raise, don't know what to say, call your mom crying on the phone. Then you hear it ring from the front phone. Then you hear it ring from the front row And oh, you're feeling betrayed All you grow And oh, you're feeling betrayed All you gets that cliche How we all make mistakes Next thing gets that cliche How we all make mistakes Next thing Well, that was a tough one Uh, bass, number eight The only thing that changes is the bass Nice. Timpani, only thing that changes. Telling you to sit, but you're not taking this is never ending. No, they never quit. Well, telling you to sit, but you're not taking this is never ending. No, they never quit. Well, why should you? You're through with them twisting the truth. Why should you? You're through with them twisting the truth. You're shaking with grief. You true. You're shaking with grief. You turn to the priest and you try to speak, but next thing you turn to the priest and you try to speak, but next thing. You Number 10, organs. The only thing changes. Keep wishing they might Keep wishing they might listen. But listen. But maybe they'll never know how much they maybe they'll never know how much they've hurt you, darling. Hurt you, darling. 
one more listen through. Number one. Number three, piano. Drum loop. Synth. Six only the vocals change. Driving by your ex best friend, getting married to your ex boyfriend down at the ex best friend, getting married to your ex boyfriend down at the pier. Same place he swore he still loved you last year. Same place he swore he still loved you last year. Where we begged for your feet last year. Where we begged for your feet, lot straight to your feet, said I'm yours, do you? You're straight to your feet, said I'm yours, do you? You're all right, drums, and they're really sparse, so you gotta really focus. Heart begins to raise, don't know what to say, call your mom crying on the phone. begins to raise, don't know what to say, call your mom crying on the phone. Then you hear it ring from the front row. Then you hear it ring from the front row. And oh, you're feeling betrayed, all you grow. And oh, you're feeling betrayed, all you gets that cliche. How we all make mistakes, next thing gets that cliche. How we all make mistakes, next thing. Bass, only bass changes. Number nine, timpani. Telling you to sit, but you're not taking this is never ending. No, they never quit. Well, telling you to sit, but you're not taking this is never ending. No, they never quit. Well, why should you? You're through with them twisting the truth. Why should you? You're through with them twisting the truth. You're shaking with grief. You true. You're shaking with grief. You turn to the priest and you try to speak, but next thing you turn to the priest and you try to speak, but next thing you. And ten organ. Keep wishing you they might keep wishing you they might listen. But listen. But maybe don't never know how much they maybe don't never know how much they hurt you, darling. Hurt you, darling. All right, how did you guys do the big reveal? I'm going to put the answers on screen in a moment. Uh, there we go. Uh, so I'll play you just... Oh, hey now. Why did... There we go. Okay. Back to our regularly scheduled program. Okay. 
I'm gonna play a little bit of each one just so you can kind of get a feel for electric guitar down 3 dB. So every red section is down 3 dB from the yellow section. Yep, that's 3 dB. The drum loop is 5 dB down. So uh, red is 5 dB down from yellow. That was a tough one. This is even tougher. The piano is up only 1 dB, so it's a really almost imperceivable change, but if you listen closely, you can hear it. Here you go. Nice. Uh, what are we on? Number four, drum loop is down 4 dB. Okay, synth is up 2 dB, so the red section is up 2 dB. Okay, lead vocals, that's the only thing that changes in the mix. The lead vocals are up 2 dB. Driving by your ex best friend, getting married to your ex boyfriend down at the ex best friend, getting married to your ex boyfriend down at the pier. Same place he swore he still loved you last year. Same place he swore he still loved you last year. Where we nice. Drums? Drums are down 4 dB. I begins a race, don't know what to say, call your mom crying on the phone. I begins a race, don't know what to say, call your mom crying on the phone. Then you hear it ring from the front row. Then you hear it ring from the front row. And oh, you're feeling betrayed. All you grow. And oh, you're feeling betrayed. All you get's that. Number eight is the bass down two. Feel a little less weight on the mix. 2 dB down on the bass. Uh, the timpani is up 5 dB. Telling you to sip, but you're done taking this is never ending. No, they never quit. Well, telling you to sip, but you're done taking this is never ending. No, they never quit. Well, why should you? You're through with them twisting the Why should you? You're through with them twisting the truth. You and finally, 10 organ is up 3 dB. Keep wishing. How did y'all do? Light up the chat roll and let me know how uh, your answers were. I, I know the exact dB amounts are really, really damn hard to guess. Uh, but, you know, hopefully you, you nailed the up and down. Um, even that's a challenge because your ears can just be so deceiving. Uh, and this really shows you how hard it is to really listen and interpret what you're listening to and start making accurate decisions on it. It's really tough, but that's basically all of my ear training is really trying to teach you how to do that. Um, okay, let's go back to the chat roll. Uh, Michael Chadwick asks, Hey Ken, uh, the mix you just did, the sprint mix of My Boo, sounded great already. Is that because of the gear, uh, like your SSL, or is it the recording? Uh, did the record come with effects already? So, okay. When I sprint mix, usually I am, sp I am sprint mixing mixed stems. So, Maibu, the original session probably had 70 or 80 or 90 tracks. 
and Dominic finished the whole thing, and then he bounced out probably 30 stems out the mix bus, kick, snare, hat. Vo you know, lead vocal one, lead vocal two, etc. So everything already sounded good. The challenge with sprint mixing is uh, finding you have 30 random tracks that you don't know what volume they're supposed to be at. They've been completely randomized, uh, but they all go together. And your challenge is to make them go together as fast as possible. So the sprint mixes aren't necessarily to help your EQ skills and shit like that. It's more just to train your ear and your instincts and your speed. All right, Seon from the chat roll asks, Hey, Ken, uh, as a music producer, do you update your apps? Uh, usually, yeah. Yeah, usually, um, you know, I have an assistant for that. So <laughs> that's the assistant's job is to keep it. In fact, the the one of the first orders of business that I told Rory was, okay, my travel Mac, because um, I'm going to France uh, soon to teach some master classes, um, my travel Mac needs to be a mirror of my studio Mac so that I can pull up sessions on my travel rig uh, and teach from them or pull them up here. And that's like a software nightmare. That's just, you just got to go back and forth between your different rigs and open up the same session on both rigs and see what doesn't open on one that opens on the other and then install that or update it or... Uh, Shit's awful. Paul Nielsen asks, Hey, Ken, do you ever get concerned how some digital EQs make the sound softer and lose its edge? I don't think so. I mean, if you turn a frequency down, that's going to make it softer. But otherwise, EQs are just sculpting tools. You know, they're just, they, they just, you know, shift the sound a little bit uh, or a lot of bit. And that really depends on how you use them, what uh, types you use on the, um, the full mix that I'm about to do, uh, we'll see. We'll see what kind of EQs you guys chose for me. I don't. I don't know what it's going to be yet. Uh, that's that's going to be interesting. That's and that's coming up in like 15 minutes. I think is I'm going to start the full mix. And once I start the full mix, I'm going to narrate it and I'll I'll take questions live and I'll answer it. But I'm just going to mix until I'm done and then that'll be the show. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe an hour because I can mix really fucking fast. And I'm really going for like 90%. I'm not going for, oh my God, I want to, you know, make the most amazing mix in an hour. That's I'm, it's not me. Okay. Um, what is next? Oh, uh, we got, let's do the beat challenge. Yeah. Okay. So I want to play you guys just little snippets from uh, a bunch of the people who... Uh, submitted beats for the beat challenge, and then we'll pick winners. Now, uh, for anybody who missed uh, the last broadcast on May 26, at the beginning of the show, I served this starter up at the top of the broadcast, and I said, anybody who wants to make a beat lightning fast, you have an hour and 45 minutes into the broadcast, you've got to deliver it to a certain email address. I had like 15 or 16 submissions before the end of the show. It was just mind-blowingly incredible. And some really fire so man there's just some talented uh creatives out there um and then we did the full contest and that's what i'm gonna play now so this is the full two-week contest um i'll play you all of my top 10 favorites and then i'll play you the winner so we're gonna kick it off with kev j oh let me play you the starter first so this is the starter that everybody created their beats from you needed to use this element in your beats. It's totally royalty free. You can do whatever you want with it. You can still go get the starter and cook up if you want. Sam Champagne. I 
fixing that community is so fucking talented, it is just ridiculous. And to further prove that point, here's Mike Heaves. The Jedi Council recognizes you, Mike Heaves. Now, let me hear you yell that out. Shout oh. it this is, uh, is it Good Time Jay? Um, please, I think the rapper is Good Time Jay. Uh, and the producer is Mike Heaps. Now, let me hear you yell that out. Shout it loud. Come on. To the moon. To the moon. We on the rise. On the rise. Going up. Going up. Taste the prize. Taste the prize. To the moon. To the moon. We on the rise. On the rise. Going up. 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 Taste the prize. Taste the prize. To the moon. To the moon. We on the rise. On the rise. Going up. 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 Taste the prize. Taste the prize. To the moon. To the moon. We on the rise. On the rise. Going up. 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 Taste the prize. A couple naysayers in the crowd. We going long and dope. Joshua Schultz. Uh, Tobogo, super bass heavy Tobogo. <laughs> Dope. Uh, Christopher Sherrod? Christopher Sherrod. Okay, can, can we stop and remember for a moment that all of this started from this little starter? Everything you've heard so far started from that vibe. This is Bobby Thymon. Thimgen? Bobby Thimgen. Goddamn Bobby. Bobby won one of the uh, beat challenges with a fucking awesome submission, so um, he's thrown down again tonight. <laughs> Pepin. Uh, Brian, you got a vibe, and I really like the way all of your tracks bounce. Super dope, thirty six zero. Could hear a zillion artists on that. Nice, nice drum work. And the fingers on the beat. Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night, Man of Mystery. Honorary winner. Why are you mad, bro? Damn, you're just savaging everybody right now. It's 
still Marcus Manderson. The thing is. His piano skills are ridiculous. Okay. But the winner is uh, Alex Fuller. Alex Fuller, you won this week's beat challenge. Congratulations. This is Alex's uh, submission. I love this thing. So much energy. He's been watching Marcus Manners. That shit is fly. That sounds like the radio to me. Great work, Alex. So, Alex Fuller, you get a beta copy of Green Haas as soon as it's available. I think we'll be in beta, I'm optimistic, next week. Um, so, uh, one more thing that I want to do just real quick is play you... I'm just going to play four of the submissions that came in last week or two weeks ago during the live show. So, I fed up the starter at... at 8 p.m. and by 9:45, this is I got like 15 or 16 awesome ones. Um, this is MBI. This is torch. Abraham Knowlton. Damn. Why are you mad, bro? That's nasty. Great work, dude. Uh, and the winner... Uh, from last week, live during the show, is Tyler Chiapeca. And I just love this whole submission. It just feels like, you know, creativity completely on the fly, seat of your pants, and just fucking going for it. So, Tyler, you went for it, and you win a free copy of the beta of Green Haas. So, uh, you're going to be the first to, to get it. Hey, yo, it's Tees. Only got one shot at this one take. Let's make it count. Come on, let's go. Make it count, Tease. Think you can do us for all of these tips and these tricks. You up. When I started, I didn't know shit. Now I know slightly more shit. That's great. Making this beat's not a marathon. It's a sprint. Honestly, barely had time for the vocals, let alone mix. No, I don't miss. Come at you live, and I still wrote a hit. Just a hit and a sip, and I'm lit. Just a push and a sample, I flip. I'm the best. There's no comparison. I'm like Lennon mixed with Harrison. I'm like Hamill mixed with Ford. Feel like Ken Lewis when I'm on the boards. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It was a little gratuitous, but still. I mean, that shit is dope. And he did that during the show. So, <laughs> hats off to Tyler uh, T. Uh, Chiapeca. Man, you killed that. I love that. Uh, I just love the energy in. <sighs> yeah. All right. Great work, everybody. Uh, okay, so I'm running very slightly behind. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do Marcus Manderson mixing Night Man of Mystery. It's like a three-minute segment, and then we're straight on to pick my plugins. So, without further ado, where is Marcus Manderson mixing Night? Here he is. Marcus Manderson mixing Night Man of Mystery brings you vocal presets. Everybody loves vocal stuff. Okay, here he is. What's good, Mixing Night family? This is Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery, back with the Mixing Night Man of Mystery moment. In this Mixing Night Man of Mystery moment, we're going to talk all about vocal presets. So here we are on reddit.com. If you go to Reddit and just search for vocal presets, you can type in vocal presets for your DAW and see what shows up. I am happen to be in the Making Hip Hop Reddit group where they have some vocal presets from vocalpresets.com, which we'll get to shortly. But you go to a Reddit, type in vocal presets... 
and see what shows up. Look through all those results. You can find vocal presets for your DAW or what people are suggesting for vocal presets. Here's another Reddit page about Logic vocal presets, also from vocalpresets.com. So definitely check them out. Uh, next, we have the vocal presets community. Um, again, vocalpresets.com. Go to the Facebook group here, vocalpresets.com, to the community. You can type a post here to say, I need, uh, I'm looking for presets for uh, Logic. Um, or whatever the case is, there we go, look for logic. Um, and type that and see what results you get. You can also do a search here in the Facebook group, see what people are. As you see, someone posted here, I need vocal pre uh, presets for Logic Pro X. Send me your email. So it's a really uh, giving group for vocal presets uh, so you can get channel strips and things for your DAW. Next, we have good old-fashioned YouTube. If you just do a vocal preset search on YouTube, see what results show up free vocal templates, vocal uh, presets, things like that. Look up vocal templates. You can also put in your DAW, vocal presets for, uh, and you see all the results here, let's say for Logic Pro, um, see the videos that show up and then you can watch those. You can adapt those to your DAW. Uh, some of them uh, have downloads that you can download. Uh, some of them have stock presets using stock plugins or third-party plugins. So a lot of options there. And last but not least, shout out to Ryan from vocalpresets.com. Here we are on the vocalpresets.com page where you can learn about vocal presets, radio quality, uh, templates, and things like that. But if you go to the shop here, you can find free, did someone say free? Uh, free and low cost vocal presets uh, on vocalpresets.com. So you have Big Drip, which is free. You have this interview preset, which is free. Other line, uh, Stargaze. So definitely check out vocalpresets.com. Most of the others are under uh, $20. I think the most is 19. So you can definitely check those out. If you click on one of them, I believe you also get an example of what they sound like before and after. So you can do that uh, on that page. So vocalpresets.com. Again, uh, a lot of these are free. Some of them are under $20. Definitely check them out. Shout out to vocalpresets.com. Again, this is Marcus Madison, Mixing Night Man of Mystery. Today we talked all about vocal presets. I'll include these links in the Discord group. So I'll see you over there. Be safe and be well, everyone. All right. All right. Peace. Thank you, Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery. Uh, Marcus always brings you the best segments. Also over at the Mixing Night Discord channel, Marcus has a free stuff section with a list of all of... It's not only like a free plugins list, but it's a curated free plugins list. It is all of the plugins that you want to use that are free, and hopefully not many of the ones that you don't. Okay. Let's go to Pick My Plugins. Pick My Plugins. All right. Wow, we had 70 responses. Holy shit. Um... Okay, well, let's see. What did you pick for me? Um, choose two EQs. It looks like stock and UAD Pultec Pro Legacy. Okay, good choices. Uh, the Waves graphic almost eked in there. You guys realize that you could have stuck me with the API graphic and a stock EQ. That would have been a real challenge. Thank you for not doing that. Uh, two compressors. Uh, UAD Distressor, awesome sauce. And, ooh, the... Uh, Oh, that's a tie. Okay, so stock compressor and Kramer pie and distressor. I think I'll go stock. Um, uh, but uh, pick one deesser, Ren deesser. Okay, pick one delay. Waves H delay. Eh, bummer. I like the uh, Arturia Infinity delay. Is my new favorite delay unit. That thing is beast mode. Um, choose two reverbs. Uh, what one? Oh, Valhalla. Nice. Uh, Valhalla Vintage Verb, and it looks like by a nose, Fab Filter edged out Slate Verb Suite. Um, uh, D-Verb got a bunch of votes. I like D-Verb. It's a, you know, it's solid. It does its thing. Um, he, uh, okay, I'll finish this. Mix Bus Compression. Pick one. Uh, you guys went with Isotope Ozone 9. Excellent choice. Finisher. Um, this is like mastering stuff. Uh, pick one. You guys went with Fab Filter Pro L2. Excellent choice. Uh, all right. That's what... Okay. And Dominic, can you put my top five plugins that I'm allowed to use on the screen as well? Um, I can't remember what those were. Uh, Auto-Tune, Green Haas, of course. I gotta be able to use Green Haas. I mean, uh, uh, Green Haas, Auto-Tune, um, UAD, uh, Varimu. Soothe 2, and I can't remember what else, but, uh, all right. So, I'm going to mix, where is it, uh, On My Bully, it's a killer song. I mean, so, 
I should probably let me play a little bit of the rough mix, and I'll I'll be comparing back and forth between the rough mix and the final. But I want to play like a minute, minute and a half of the rough mix because this is always what I do before I start mixing. Um, I listen to the rough mix, I vibe with it, and then I just fucking go. So I'm gonna listen to the rough mix, and then I'm just gonna fucking go. And here we go. Every time I'm on my No more holding back, not gonna dim my shine Lacing up my boots, taking back what's mine I know who I am, I am I'm not changing my steps when I say I don't care no more In my head, is it what I said? Is it how I sing? I take it to bed, that's why I cannot sleep So hard to dream when it's suffocating Thoughts suffocating me I know, it's a matter of things Okay, so first, let's ask ourselves, uh, what do I think can even be improved in the rough mix? And usually that question isn't answered until I'm in deep into the mix, uh, and then it just becomes obvious. But, um, but the vocals are the first uh, thing. To me, the vocals are just a little bit dark. They're a little bit sunk into the track, and they sound maybe a little bit over-processed. Um, but that just might be not enough brightness to them or not enough evenness in the compression. They kind of go in and out of the track. So the vocals are going to be a big target for me. Um, overall, I think the, the instrumental was mixed pretty well, so I'm hoping to at least match that well or better. I'm just looking for a good overall um, blend of the instrumental, and then I can put the vocals in and get to work. So uh, it's 924. Here we go. Um, I'm just going to turn off the mic and, and work for a while. Uh, feel free to fire up questions on the chat roll if you got them, and I will answer them in real time as I narrate. So I have three kick drums here, super subby, and the main one, punchy, this is going to be the driver, and then a third one, it's just like all click. So um, I'm going to auto-align those with sound radics in a little bit, um, but first I'm just going to strike an overall balance. This is the sample stem. They, I don't know how Jason did this, but he turned that sample into this pad. So as I'm pulling all of these elements into the mix, I'm not just trying to balance them out and find where they fit best. I'm also evaluating what kind of a sound is this and what might I want to do to it, if anything. And I can tell you the plucks, I'm definitely going to hit with some UBK1 compression uh, because that's, that's the go-to. Okay. This needs some reverb. the mix. 
makes bus louder. Okay, try this. So really, I'm just turning up what you guys are hearing right now. I'm not really affecting the mix bus at all other than volume, so you can hear. So disregard those actions. See how the transitions are beginning to come together? I'm actually sitting and listening to each thing and trying to balance it against each other uh, and just rough everything in as fast as I can. And you see, when I'm balancing sounds, a lot of times I'm muting in and out while I'm listening. And what I'm listening for is, you know, how is it affecting the song? When I remove it, do I miss it? When I put it back in, is it too loud? Is it not enough? Is it just right? You know, what, what is this thing telling me? And I'm going through on the console, which is basically a big controller in, in this particular mode, and I'm selecting tracks in there that I see the faders down so that I can quickly find where the fader is in Pro Tools and go straight to it.
So I also have this entire section. All of these blue tracks are this drop section. Uh, so I'm going to mix that totally separately. I'm kind of ignoring that for now. And I'll kind of I'll flesh out as much of the vocals on the main thing as I can, and then I'll move to that drop section. So now that I have a real basic, uh, and I've been working for eight minutes, and I have all, I have all of my instrumentation in the mix except for the drop, and now I can start bringing in the vocals and mix the vocals against the instrumental, and then start fine tuning things. <laughs> I know what key this is in. Um, it's gonna be. Oh, sorry, it's gonna. Uh, you know, where's my stock? Um, let me try stock. Why not? Uh, where's stock compression? Come on. I can't find it. Here we go. Dine three. Uh, all right, I'll find it. No more back. Sleeping back with mine, I know who I am. I am I'm not changing my steps and I say I don't care no more in my head. Is it what I say? Is it how I think? I take it to bed. That's why I cannot sleep. So hard to dream when it's suffocating thoughts suffocating me. Okay, so I'm doing a few things here of note. Um I'm rolling off the low end on the actual audio and making the de de detector ignore it. And then I'm doing that bell thing that I think focuses the detection more on the mid-range. Uh, four to one ratio. I've got a medium slow attack on the vocal, so I'm letting the kind of the aggressive leading edge of the vocal through just a tiny little bit. And then I'm clamping down on it and uh, super fast release, so the release is tracking uh the the release of the vocal so it's always keeping it at a pretty tight dynamic range uh, all the time and you can see the compressor is always working um i've always got it just flickering a little bit even when she's really soft and then it digs in when she's louder pulls back but it doesn't sound like it pulls back too far and everything sounds much more even and in the mix and i don't really have to automate it i just have to kind of clear it up now a little bit no more there's something in the mid-range that's really bothersome what are my eqs pro tools stock where is it eq seven man uh there's something around seven nine hundred maybe Let's see if we can find it. Hey, Maz, what do you want? No more holding back. I'm going to get my shine. Racing up my boots. Sleeping back with mine. I know who I am. I am. I'm not changing my steps. And I say I don't care no more in my head. Is it what I say? Is it how I think? I take it to bed. That's why I cannot sleep. So hard to dream when it's suffocating. Thoughts suffocating me. No more holding back. Now it's too sibilant like this, so I'm going to DS it next. Uh, but that brightness really needed to open up the enunciation. And then all of those harsh S's and things that are coming out now, I'm about to correct those with a DSer. Um, so here's how I think about uh, mixing vocals, very, very generally speaking, in frequency ranges. Lows and lower mids are for overall size. And here's what I mean. Listen to how big the vocal sounds when I turn up the low end. No more holding back, I'm going to my shine. 
Chasing on my boots, sleeping back with mine. I know who I am. Doesn't it sound bigger? So the low frequencies and the lower mids um, can make your vocal sound bigger, but they can also make it sound muddy or tubby or whatever. So you got to be careful. All of these are, are you know, in balance. Um, your mid range is your clarity section. So like one to four or five K is really your enunciation frequencies, right? Especially in three, the three K range is where it's most clear. And uh, so, um, in the right below that range, uh, 900 hertz, there was this, it almost sounds like paper quality. Um, and let me, let me, sh let me play it for you. So you could hear when I turn that up, it's really kind of, I don't know how you describe it. So I just found that by sweeping, notched that out, and now that's under control. Um, right at uh, 3.5K, I found kind of the best piece of the enunciation frequencies and brought that up. And then the overall brightness, uh, 15K, I'm doing a pretty steep brightness at 15K. Uh, I may back off of that a little bit. We'll, we'll find out. Um, but the next thing is definitely going to be a de-esser. So, uh, what do, oh, I get the Ren DSer. Thank God I get the Renaissance DSer. So, it's the only one I've ever used. Uh, uh, plenty of them are good, I'm sure. No more holding back, not gonna dim my shine. Lacing up my boots, taking back what's mine. I know who I am, I am. I'm not changing my stance when I say I don't care no more in my head. Is it what I said? Is it how I sing? I take it to bed. So I'm reducing 8 to 10 dB off of the top of the vocal on the S's, and it just sounds clean and smooth. That's not an uncommon amount for my de to reduce. You know, it happens so lightning fast that it really, the objective with a de is to is to really take the aggression and the harsh, bitey quality of your S's and T's and things and just pull them down to a level that doesn't do that to your ear. That's really the goal. Um, and you, what you don't want to do and what you really want to always listen for when you're DSing is um, making your voice sound lispy by too much DSing. Um, I will get to Josh S. in a minute. No more holding back, not going to my shine, lacing up my boots, taking back what's mine, I know who I am. I... Hear how over DS that sounds? She sounds lispy now. All of the S's are gone away. No more holding back, not gonna dim my shine. Okay, so you gotta be real careful. No more holding back, not gonna dim my shine. Lacing up my boots, taking back what's Okay. And then uh, I'm gonna even it out with one more distressor because I usually use two um, compressors. And why not do it here? One of those two is usually a distressor, so I'm gonna do fast. No more holding back, not gonna dim my shine. Lacing up my boots, taking back what's mine. I know who I am, I am. I'm not changing my stance when I say I don't care no more. I'm not super squeezing it, I'm just getting a little bit. I still want the loud parts to be a little louder. No more holding back, not gonna dim my shine. Lacing up my boots, taking back what's mine. I know who I am. Oh, I forgot I have fresh air. Okay, so <laughs> let me. Get rid of this high band and let me show you what Fresh Air does from Slate, uh, which is very similar to um, just a regular high frequency EQ boost, but there's definitely more going on. There it is, Fresh Air. Um, here. No more holding back, not gonna dim my shine. Listen up my boots, sleeping back with mine. I know who I am, I am. I'm not changing my stance when I say I don't care. Okay, this got me in trouble. I I put this after the deesser and got rid of the high frequency so the deesser wasn't reacting to it. Okay, what do I get? Valhalla and 
and what's my other reverb? Fab Filter Pro R? Let me take some questions. Uh, Josh S. from the chat roll asks, building on the, quote, do I miss it technique, uh, if the answer is not really does... <laughs> It, like, not really, I don't miss it, uh, then what does that mean? Does the sound sit lower in the mix? Um, yeah, you're just trying to find where... I think the, the maybe the easiest way to describe it is you're trying to find where the sound feels like it belongs. Uh, if, you, if you're experienced enough, there's just this moment where you're like, oh, that makes sense. And that's kind of... I'm, I'm not sure if there's a better way to describe it. But you're always listening and, and looking for a certain feel and a certain something. And when those things get into alignment in the right way with really uh, trained ears, your ears go, yeah, that's it. Okay, next. Okay. Uh, Big Ben de Prodigy asks, hey, Ken, uh, do you, how do you control your sibilances? I just showed you. Okay, so um, uh, P sibilances. Oh, p with a pop filter while you're recording. So you gotta get, I don't know where mine is. Um, I don't know. But get one of those like metal, I think it's a Stedman metal pop filter and all of your vocals will have that problem corrected before mix. Uh, if you get to the mix stage and you have a big P, usually you can do something like, uh, I'm gonna, uh, I can do stock. I, I do something like a real steep, say 24 db per octave or steeper and then i'll go wherever there's not vocal happening during those plosives so you do an offline or you cut those plosive parts out onto another track and you roll off everything steep under like 100 150 and it tends to get rid of it um uh but get rid of it at the source when you're recording that's the best way um okay back to back to mixing i'm gonna where? Oh, I have to, uh, I didn't assign buses. Okay, so I have, uh, what do I have? Valhalla and Fab Filter Pro R. That's going to be an interesting, and I have H delay. So I have Valhalla and Fab Filter Pro R. This is such a beautiful transparent reverb. It's really gorgeous. I'm going to use it really short, I think. Um, and then I have Waves H Delay for my only delay. Thanks. Where, uh, maybe that's not up on the... I have a few plugins. Not many. <laughs> Why? Why on the analog? Why? Why Waves? Why would you do that? Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah. All right, let's get let's put some uh, reverb on Sam Champagne and see what she sounds like. Valhalla rocks, man. So hard to dream when it's suffocating thoughts suffocating me. I added a lot of bass in her voice already, and I feel like the bass is feeding the reverb a little bit too much. So this point times takes this, everything below this, and multiplies it. So I'm reducing everything below 700 hertz in the return of the reverb. No more holding back, not gonna dim my shine. Lacing up my boots, taking back what's mine. You don't really want a ton of high frequency in a reverb because then it tends to carry your sibilances into the reverb and gets really messy. So 6K, 7K is a top high frequency is about normal. No more holding back, not gonna dim my shine. Lacing up my boots, taking back what's mine. I know who I am. I am. I'm not changing my steps. This is the R verb. Is it what I said? Is it how I sing? I take it. Well, I'm gonna to bed. double up on those and give it a little bit of like front depth to give it a little like presence, and then the longer one to just let it carry. And then I'm gonna see if maybe a tap delay works on this. Um, 159. So I'd probably try a quarter note tap. Uh, I I like filtering down my taps. Um, and not so much feedback. Uh, let's yeah, let's try this. No more holding back, not gonna dim my shine. Lacing up my boots, taking back what's mine. I know who I am. I am not changing my steps. 
So one thing that you need to know about effects is in solo, they sound much like you're using way too much and then you put it into the mix and most of those effects get swallowed up by all of the other tracks in the mix. So, um, you know, you can set your basic effects in solo, but you're probably going to want to change them once uh, you add the thing into the full mix. And that's just ears. Do you hear how her voice is darker and a little bit harder to understand? I'm switching back and forth between the rough mix and my current mix bus, which is not a mix. It's just in progress. But you can already hear that the lead vocal is starting to sound clearer and slightly more on top of the beat. Here is the AB again. That, that distressor is really good at just keeping that vocal sitting right on top of the mix, right where it is. It really cuts down your need for automation. Um, and typically, I usually just copy all my settings uh, if it's like, that's the verse. So here's the chorus vocal, right? So I'm just going to copy all my plugins over, and then I will listen and evaluate. I'm not going to just blindly copy them over and expect that it's going to sound perfect because vocals change when, uh, depending on what range you sing. If a vocalist sings harder, it's going to be a different frequency set than if a vocalist sings softer and breathier. So here, let me just listen to how the chorus sounds with the verse vocal chain, and then we'll tweak from there. Now, one thing about the lead vocal and the chorus, there's going to be a lot of backing vocals that sing the same lyrics and reinforce the lead. So where my lead is right now is going to be a little bit low because all of the support vocals are going to make all the vocals uh, lines sound louder. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. Uh, from the chat roll, Paul Nielsen asks, Hey Ken, do you prefer mono reverb or stereo reverb on guitars? Specifically on guitars? It really depends on the part. Um, you know, if it's like a chicka guitar or something with a lot of rhythm, typically I'll take a mono uh, reverb and I'll pan the mono reverb wherever it is uh, with the, you know, with the uh, main guitar. Um, and I, I like springs a lot because, you know, it sounds like a guitar amp. So um, springs and plates tend to work best with guitars, I have found. Um, but if you want long, carrying, beautiful verbs, it's usually halls. Okay, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, back to my regular scheduled program. 9.50, I've been mixing for 30, I've been mixing for 36 minutes. How am I doing so far? If you're still hanging out in Nerdville with me, man, God bless you. All right, <laughs> I've added a couple vocals. Now I'm, I'm gonna mix the uh, breakdown as fast as I can. Um, Cause man, it's got so many tracks. And just, uh, here we go.
So if I was mixing this song for real, for real, for real, and not for broadcast, I would, that's how I would start this section. This section, I would get everything in in five or ten minutes, and then I would sit and vibe with this section for an hour or so. And I would just subtly listen to each part and make sure I knew the, the whole ebb and flow of how all of these parts are going, because there's probably a real intricacy with the way all of these different samples and parts and stuff are stabbing in and out. Uh, and I probably don't have time to truly catch that, so I'm just getting the kind of the general vibe and seeing how it goes. Now there's only, uh, yeah, the only thing I pre-mixed uh, was a couple of the sets of backing vocals, and I want to show you what I did and why I did it, just to kind of dispel some myths. So here's the O's. So I use this uh, uh, Arturia flanger. Fucking awesome. I love this thing. Sometimes that's all you need on some ooze in the background. There's a little bit of motion. And you see, I'm not compressing them or anything. They're, they were probably compressed when they were recorded. And I'm just blending them into a normal blend. Uh, same with the these tracks. It's a matter they are gonna be what they want. They want. So let me just, I'm just gonna blend that from scratch just so you can kind of see the process. Uh, where is it? Okay. I've got this grouped into two, two, and two. So it's three part harmony, two tracks each, panned hard left and right. And you see, I'm listening and trying it at different levels and just seeing how it hits me. And then wherever my favorite level is, is where it'll go. Okay, on to the main uh, backgrounds. So that's formented, of course, and let's see if the low is formented. So yeah, these are probably both generated from the lead vocal with a formant plug-in, like a little altar boy, and form and turned up and down and reprinted. R really common uh, pop vocal production technique. Great job, guys and girls. Uh, I'm gonna blend those last. Every time I'm high up, they on me, I'ma be on my bully, my grind. My mumble, they on me. Every time I'm high up, they on me, I'ma be on my bully, my grind. I don't care how you feel it tonight. Every time I'm mumble, they on me. Every time I'm high up, they
I'm a stay on my pull in my ground. I don't care how you feel, it's so not hide. Every time I'm on board, they on me. Every time I'm high up, they on me. I'm a be on my pull in my ground. I don't care how you feel. Stock plug-in works fine on vocals. Every time I'm on board, and you see, I'm just same thing I'm doing with the distressor, slowing down the attack, speeding up the release. Um, you know, light ratio, three to one, not a big deal. Uh, and th these were recorded really low, so I got to pull the threshold way, way down to affect it. But generally, the result is the same. Every time I'm on board, they on me. Every and usually, what I do with backgrounds is copy the settings. They tend to work. Um, Every time I'm on board, they on me. Every time I'm high up, they on me. I'm a be on my pull in my ground. I don't care how you feel it tonight. Every time I'm on board, they on me. Every time I'm high up, they on me. I'm a stay on my pull in my ground. I don't care how you feel it tonight. Every time I'm on board, they on me. Every time I'm high up, they on me. I'm a be on my pull in my ground. The background sound good, but they're kind of dark, so I'm going to go with uh, Poltec Pro Legacy. God, this is great on vocals. I'm pulling a little 3K out of the backgrounds because I don't need that frequency to support the lead vocal. I want that frequency to dominate the lead vocal. So I'm just pulling a little bit out. Every time I'm on board. And I'm really, normally I don't brighten vocals. I don't brighten background vocals up like this. But because there are virtually no sibilances in the backgrounds of the chorus, I feel like I can get the, the um, backgrounds really nice and bright without too much ramification. And uh, uh, usually if you have really bright SE background vocals, all of those sibilances spill over into your mix. And the listener's focus is constantly pulled to the left and the right with their ears because they're hearing sibilance in this ear and sibilance in that ear instead of just the lead vocal pulling their attention. So... I usually DS the backing vocals on the sides more than the lead, but um, I'm going to DS the vocals on the sides, but I don't feel like they need them much because they're not saying S's. Every time I'm on 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 they on me, every time I'm high up, they on me, I'm going to be on my bull in my grind, I don't care how you feel it tonight. Nice. So here's what the... Let me show you what this is doing. Every time I'm on board, they on me. Every time I'm high up, they on me. I'ma be on my bull in my ground. I don't care how you feel it tonight. Every time I'm on board. I feel like it's got enough bass, so I don't need to add or subtract. And I'm just going to copy those settings to all the other backgrounds because they work. No reason to reinvent the wheel on every single track. Um... And I haven't added the formant ones yet, but let me add these to the mix and balance them and see how it goes. I have the lead vocal muted right now. Uh, here is here it is with the lead vocal coming in now. So you hear how all the background vocals support the lead vocal. It sounded a little bit low before when it was only the lead vocal. Now it sounds like it's sitting perfectly. Um, now let me add these formented vocals in. Oh, so sorry. So the way I balanced the doubles was I muted the lead vocal and I just listened to the, to the background vocals. They're going to be low in the mix. They're there to support the lead vocal. But um, here, this is what the background vocals sound without the lead. Every time 
time I'm on up, they on me. Every time I'm on up, they on me. I'ma be on my fucking mind, grind. I don't care how you feel it tonight. Every time I'm on up, they on me. Every time I'm on up, they on me. I'ma stay. This plugin is stupid. Every time I'm on up, they on me. Every time I'm on up, they on me. I'ma be on the ball in my grind. Here's one of the really cool tricks of the Haas effect with Green Haas. I think the most powerful knob on this entire plugin is the dry wet button or the dry wet uh, uh, watering can. And I never really used the Haas effect in this way until I built this plugin. And now I use the Haas effect totally different and way more creatively than I ever used it before. And you will too. So you can balance, you can decide how wide you want your backgrounds to be or whatever you're running through it, or, and you can add back in the dry to focus the, you know, to center and focus your vocal a little bit. And here, let me show it to you on uh, lead vocal. No, who I am. I'm not changing my steps and I say I don't care no more in my head. Is it what I said? Is it how I say? I take it to bed. That's why I cannot sleep. So hard to dream when it's suffocating thoughts suffocating me. Hear, hear this how, see the dry wet is almost all the way dry, but you still listen to what the plugin is doing. No more holding back, not gonna dim my shine, lacing up my boots. Taking back what's mine, I know who I am. Of course, I got the delay taps going too, which are not greenhouse. Um, so, so it's it's keeping that center, but it's giving it some. Here, let me let me mute the tap so you can hear it. Boom, boom, boom. Here's greenhouse. No more holding back, not gonna dim my shine, lacing up my boots. Taking back what's mine, I know who I am. I am. I'm not changing my steps when I say I don't care no more in my head. Is it what I said? Is it how I sing? I take it to bed. That's why I cannot. I know, this thing is amazing. I'm so happy with this thing. Uh, July. Hopefully greenhouse in July. Okay. Where where are we at? What else? Um, well, let me listen from the top and see where we're at. Every time I mumble, they on me. Every time I'm my And you see, the closer I get to a result, the more the mix comes into focus and the more I can listen to the finer details. So earlier on, I'm not really listening to or for the finer details. I'm listening to put everything together as fast as possible. And then I'm listening for where can I bring out the little magic elements in this mix um, and really make it special. So that's kind of, you know, I'm starting to treat the mix bus. Usually I start treating the mix bus when I'm about when everything is in and roughly balanced the way that it's going to be balanced and nothing is going to change level-wise drastically in my mix, then I start tailoring the mix bus. Uh, and the very me was on my uh, safe list, so uh, I'm not. I'm only using slate as a volume. I'm not. It's not doing any um, coloration. Um, okay. Now and then I get. Ooh, I get pull tech. You know. I'm going to use the stock plug-in across the mix bus. Y'all can't stop me. You can't stop me. Okay. Maybe you can stop me. I don't know.
I'm just looking for some frequencies that are bring bring some musicality and and solidity to the mix right now. Um, and then usually I would do something to very gently spread the mix out. On a BX digital, it'd be like 112 percent over 100, 113 at most. I really don't go further than that. I feel like after that it starts getting really phasey, and you just don't like it much. Um, what else? I don't think I'm ready for ozone yet. And you see, here's the other secret about mixing. So many tracks are just balanced right now. They're not, you know, so I think we're probably hitting, like, almost getting boring uh, land on the um, full mix. I'll finish the mix bus for you, and I'll show you a few other things. Um, let me let me show you the sound radix, because this really makes a huge difference with kick drums. Um, okay. Anytime you have one-shot kick drums, even if they are completely different, there are three radically different sounding kick drums, they all interact with each other, and they all have a phase relationship with each other. I'm going to use Sound Radix Auto Align. Uh, that should have been on my safe list if it wasn't. Uh, but I want to show this to you guys anyway. So, um, so I'm going to make this the, the master, and it's going to control the other two. Where, why don't I have that? Uh, Sound Radix, auto align. Boom. So I'm going to pick that up here, and then I'm just going to auto detect it and let it correct. It should eventually find a relationship it likes and, oh, wait. helps a little bit. Let's check out the sub kick on it. So that was just the first two kicks together. Let's hear the first and third kick only. Sorry. Come on. Oh, okay. One more time. Sound Radix all line. Receive one. This is the third one. Super subbing. Hear the radical difference? All I'm doing is uh, bypassing this on off is just a hard bypass uh, bypassing um, the phase relationship and listen to the huge difference it makes just between these two kick drums okay and then you add the third one back Here's the thing about uh, this technique. It doesn't always work, and I feel like off is better on this, so I'm going to leave that one off. The, the, this one made a huge difference. Hear how solid that is in the mix? It just cuts, and it's right there. Boom. I'm not doing any EQ. I just, I just phase and time align them. That's all. Good job for Green Huss.
got some questions. Uh, Michael Michelle she? Uh, I'm sorry if I butchered that, uh, asks, Hey Ken, does it really matter if you leave the dead, uh, no audio info in a track, or is it best to chop out all of the dead air bits? So you're talking about all of the, why have I, uh, strip silenced all of these? Here's why, Michael. When I am working and looking at my session, you see how stark my screen is. All of my tracks are very simply labeled. I don't have any writing or f f anything on my tracks. Everything is strip silence. It looks like I can just look at it and tell, okay, this is probably the chorus right here. Uh, this is a verse. You know, you can just, you can look at your whole session and realize this must be a verse. This must be a verse. This must be the bridge. Um, and it just gives you that instant visual representation, which speeds up your workflow tremendously. And then you see I have it organized 808s, kicks, claps, uh, hats and percussion and things, then bass line, this, the main sample pad, um, plucks, you know, and it just goes. And then you get to the drop, and then the pink are all background vocals, and the red are all lead vocals. Okay. Uh, let's see. Michael Chadwick asks, Hey, Ken, on your compressor, do you put attack and release at zero. Uh, it depends on what I'm compressing. If you saw on the vocals, typically, not always, typically my attack and release times on vocals are slow, medium slow attack and fast release. That's my very typical um, uh, vocal chain. Uh, and you can see with the distressor, I've done it here. So it's fast release on zero is the fastest, and attack is five would be medium, I'm medium slow. Uh, four to one ratio, it's not gentle, but it's not super aggressive, and you can see the rest. So, um, okay. Uh, fire any other questions on the chat roll. If you got them, I'll cover them. Now I think I'm gonna finish uh, the mix bus. Let me make sure. Every time I'm Switching back and forth between the rough mix. Now, see, the rough mix is always informative because I had the bass pad cranked way the fuck up, and theirs is really far down, so I probably want to find a different location for it. there's something about the rough mix that you just go like oh that one the shaker is better the ad lib is better you know there's the there i mean it should feel good you know rough mix doesn't have to sound great it should feel like the song That, that sounds nice. Very sparingly on something like a mix bus. Mm. 
You bring a little extra clarity to those highs if it doesn't make them too harsh and everything can just snap right into focus a little bit better. So um, the mix is feeling really balanced now. I'm just going to use Ozone 9 Mastering Assistant and let it get me in the ballpark of uh, where I need to be and then I'll tweak the... Uh, sometimes I go to Ozone and tweak it after Mastering Assistant. Sometimes I just tweak the rest of the chain that feeds it. Um, so let me... Uh, Manual loudness, CD medium. didn't do much at all. Uh, the one thing that I do on Ozone 9 is I back off the output to about minus 1.5, which just gives me some headroom to finish off the mix with L2, and that's the last thing I'm going to do tonight. Um, here is FabFilter Pro L2. Um, usually I'll listen to all of these and pick my favorite. FGX as a meter only. I'm actually doing the final squeeze with the fab filter, but I trust the slate meter and I look at, I don't give a fuck about luffs. I don't give a fuck about luffs. RMS is the key. Find the loudest part of your song and uh, dial in your RMS so that it averages between minus seven and minus nine. Let me show you what I'm doing. <laughs> That's pretty consistently right into the high eights, which it is totally fine for this. Now, since this is on my mix bus, I'm gonna over, usually I would oversample it by like 16 times, um, and that cleans up your signal a little bit. Uh, and dither, I put at 24 bit. And then your output, um, see the output level 0, 0.00? You wanna back that off to at least minus 0 0.07, 0 0.1 is safer. You want to give yourself a little bit of headroom for streaming. Um, so we'll go minus 0 0.8 on this. And that's it. Um, you know, I, I could sit here and mix it for another three hours, but I think you've gotten the bulk of this. Um, uh, Diego asks from the chat roll, hey Ken, where is the automation? Can you elaborate on that? Uh, there is no automation. I, I haven't automated a single thing. Mostly I'm, I'm controlling with compression. And, uh, and letting my ears tell me where to balance things, and I'm controlling the volume levels and the dynamics with compression, and uh, just putting it all in there. It's, it's not rocket science. Um, I'm, I'm going to play this top to bottom and end the broadcast, I'm sure. And, you know, let me just go back and forth between the rough mix real quick before I do that, just so you can see how much we've improved in under one hour. I have been mixing for 59 minutes. Um... And in under one hour, this all came together this well. So imagine if I spent six or seven hours on this, or if I was an amateur, if I spent a day or two and really, you know, worked hard and, and listened and took my time and referenced on other speakers and used A-B referencing to really dial in the, the feel and the, and the levels of instruments on my mix, you can do this stuff too. You just gotta, you know, the pros are very fast and we trust our instincts implicitly. You guys are building all of those skills, so it just takes time. Okay, let me listen to some uh, A-B between the rough mix and the final. Hopefully you'll be able to tell the difference.
especially in the verse two, listen to the difference in the vocal presence and how it sits in the mix. The lead vocal now is solid. It doesn't move. It's right in the middle of your speakers. It's bright, but it's not hurting your ears. Um, you can understand every lyric. That's what we're going for. Um, okay, so I'm going to play out the full mix and end the broadcast. About a three-minute song. Uh, the mix isn't going to be great, but, it, you know, it's, it's pretty good so far. Um, so so uh, this is Ken Lewis for Mixing Night. Thank you for joining me. I have had a blast. So definitely, you know, drop in the comments um, on uh, the YouTube page and let me know if you like the full mix, if you... You know, if this was boring as fuck and you like the other format of the show, I may start doing these types of things more often later in the show and nerd out for an hour. But that's really going to depend on viewers. So you guys let me know. Uh, I am Ken Lewis for Mixing Night. Thank you to my Mixing Night community. You guys are fucking awesome. And uh, this is Sam Champagne and Jason Lee on my bully for the uh, Mixing Night June 9th Beat Challenge. Great work. Great work. Uh, in here, let me just show you what I do. This is normally how I print passes. Um, wave, interleaved. There's really no difference between 24 and 32-bit, except for 32-bit can save your ass if you're distorting the mix bus. I don't distort the mix bus, so I don't need 32-bit. Uh, sample rate, I usually go 44.1, although the coming era of uh, Dolby Atmos might switch that to 96. We'll see. Um, online or offline, depending on if I'm in the box or analog. Um, add an MP3 if you want, um, and off we go. Every time I mumble, they on me. Every time I'm high up, they on me. I'm a beat on the board in my grind. I don't care how you feel until now. No more holding back, I gon' dim my shine. Listen to my boots, taking back what's mine. I know who I am, I am. I'm not changing my stance when I say I don't care no more.